I'm Stefan Hell. I work at the Max Planck Institute for Biophysical Chemistry in uh, Göttingen in Germany and I'm specializing in fundamentally improving the spatial resolution of light microscopy, in particular fluorescence microscopy for all kinds of, ap of applications, especially for the life sciences. I had an intuitive feeling that uh, the resolution of a say, light microscope has not come to an end, that even with focused light one is able to see details are much smaller than Abel's diffraction barrier. And I also had a feeling that if one exploits the properties of a floor for um, in imaging, uh, especially for, um, say, breaking the diffraction barrier, then uh, one should be able to come up with uh, images that are much, much sharper than people have thought to be possible for many, many decades. The key to breaking the diffraction barrier in a fluorescent light microscope was uh, the dye itself, the floor for itself. So exploiting transition between states in a dye actually paved the way for uh, getting the images that we have now. In the simplest case, uh, we use dyes that can be turned on and off, for example, by stimulated emission. And so we can separate uh, features, fluorescent features that are closer than the diffraction barrier because we make sure that one of them is off when the other one is on and vice versa, and that's how we can separate. And because of that, the fluorophore, or um, say the signal generating molecule, is decisive in uh, getting, uh, for getting a high spatial resolution beyond the diffraction barrier. And so um, current efforts clearly have to concentrate um, on uh, the design of new floor force or the design of new markers that emit signal um, such that one is able to, to play uh, with them so that they assume different states at different uh, time points, for example. And then I think um, it's possible to get very, very high spatial resolution in a very convenient way. Clearly one also has to improve instrumentation, but um, um, uh, the current limits are set more or less by, by uh, the object itself because the, the states of the object, the states of the flow for the states of the molecule that we're looking at actually open the door to high resolution imaging. The absolute limit probably has not been reached. Clearly, uh, one should be able to discern molecules that are as close as the size of a molecule, but one could even imagine going beyond that, seeing even to some extent, uh, say, features of the molecule, like symmetries of the molecule. So, um, while I hesitantly say that uh, one of the limits that will be set for high resolution imaging is the molecule itself, but one could imagine going even beyond that to some extent. The challenges that still remain are um, that we of course would like to image much faster, uh, so we uh, would like to image um, at a higher spatial resolution, at even higher speed, penetrate deeper down into tissue for example, for example into brain tissue. The important thing was to discover that in the end you can break the diffraction barrier and you can go beyond um, uh, limits and um, once you have realized how this can be done you can improve um, the current performance just by improving the technology that leads to the higher spatial resolution. That includes to some extent instrumentation but clearly also the probes, so the floor force and the markers that allow us to get the sharp images that we get now. I think the application of uh, say fluorescent nanoscopy or super resolution microscopy in the neurosciences is very, very important because um, um, it's, I, I think it's a tantalizing fact that say important features, morphological features such as dendritic spines are just about below the diffraction barrier of a Foxin light microscope. And there is no other technique that can really get you down to that level, to that size level of about say 50, 60, 70 nanometers non-invasively. And um, so, uh, say, a fluorescence light microscope with a spatial resolution that is four or five times beyond the diffraction mass, such as stand microscopy, uh, will be key, as we think, uh, to discovering uh, new phenomena, um, say, how s uh, nerves communicate, uh, for example, within, uh, within anti-nerve uh, tissue, uh, brain tissue, for example. Um, there are many things um, uh, to be learned and of course we would like to know in the end how the synapse works, so how, to, how uh, uh, neurons communicate actually with each other. We are actually quite pleased to see that um, uh, the biological community, the biomedical community uh, quite enthusiastically embrace these new technologies 
And we think that uh, in the end, um, uh, the high resolution methods, nanoscopy methods, super resolution methods can be transformative. And because of that, um, there is a clear demand out there. For young uh, scientists or students, it's, um, it's very important um, to go off the beaten track. I think it's very important to be um, imaginative and to envisage at least things that uh, are considered to be impossible or very, very hard to accomplish. And very often, interesting developments start out just from imagination. We have a lot of fun of doing science, discovering new things, finding out that barriers that seem to exist for a very long time can be um, shattered or, or they are crumbling uh, just by having fun of things and, and doing things better than other scientists did in the past. And of course, uh, Abe's barrier had very good reasons and there's no doubt about the fact that, that um, understanding these reasons was important. But now we can cross those barriers and in the end, um, this will be highly beneficial to not only to the life sciences, but to mankind as we hope, because, because it means that we will have a better understanding of say, say how a cell works, how diseases uh, work mechanistically, uh, what needs to be done in order to find a cure for, for a medical problem, for example.